Hey there, what's up everybody? So I know many of you are stuck at home right now. All of you are stuck at home actually. And some of you are just looking for ways to be active, to be fit, to stay in shape, and you can't go to your gym because it's closed. What are you gonna do? Just sit at home and eat and sleep all day? No, now you can join me for this at home workout routine so you could stay in shape physically active, super healthy, and fit. So why don't you join me for some exciting home workout routines? We are ready to work the first exercise we will be teaching you today is steps. Because all of you probably have steps, at least somewhere in your house, then we can all do this together. All you do is step up, step down. Step up, step down. Step up, step down. Step up, ow. Oh. Oh. Our next exercise is milk curls. All you need thing of milk, whichever size you prefer, and just curl it like this. Ugh. 3001, 3002, One of the most popular workouts is the bench press. We're gonna do the coffee table press right now. All you need is an old tube of wrapping paper and some bagels, and you're all set. Spotter! Spotter! Now, not all of you will be able to do this next one, but it is a very important one if you are able to do it. It's called the pet lift. First, you need a pet. Cleo! Hi! Ready? And one. And two. Do you love this as much as I do, Cleo? And six. Ow, scratch! Ah. It's often easy to forget to work out your wrists and your forearms. So a good activity to do is peeling potatoes. Just like this. Rawr. Have I ever told you guys how much you can do with just one potato? You can. So cardio is very important too. You wanna to make sure you get out for a couple nice walks, experience the wildlife. <gasps> Our next exercise today is crunches. Gotta keep that core in shape. So we're going to teach you how to do that. Helpful to have a nice mat or something to protect your lower back and your buttocks. Rear end, tush, derriere, butt, tailbone, backside. So you're ready to do some crunches with me? This is a tough one. Here we go. One. Two. This is my favorite so far. You may be asking, why is this woman standing on our couch? Well, we're getting ready for the next exercise. People squat. Ugh! <laughs> And then you squat. This is... Hundred. 
So as you can see, workouts have so much variety and you can do anything at home if you put your mind to it. There's a lot of workouts that require slow, deliberate movements and a lot of workouts that require like rapid, like repetitive movements. So right now I'm going to go train with another um, one of these rapid, repetitive workouts. So I'm going to be training with something called rapid eye movement. Uh, yeah. Let's see. So the other day, I decided to watch one of my favorite movies of all time, The Lion King. This movie has it all. It has unbelievable music. It's got super emotional and sad moments. And who could be funnier than Timon and Pumbaa? It's got more good music. What a wonderful phrase! Hakuna Matata! Ain't no pass! It's got epicness and redemption. Simba, you must take your place in the circle of life. How can I go back? You can do what you be. You can do it simply. You are. You are my son. It's just so, so good. You go, Simba! I got so excited watching because I remembered that we're going to Disney World this summer! But then I got sad because I remembered that our trip got cancelled. But then I got an idea. If we can't go there, what if we brought it here? So... We're going! That's right, we're going to do all the best Disney things right here in our own home. Things like waiting in line. Should I got fast passes? Character breakfasts. Disney princess meet and greets? You're my favorite Disney princess! Would you like an autograph? <laughs> <laughs> How about a picture? Okay. <laughs> Look, they got churros! Churros! Can we get a churro? We got to eat classic Disney treats. Churro? Mmm. A little bit overdone. Yeah. Disney merch! The Disney store! Can I get something, please? Oh. Mmm. A scarf with Mickey head. Oh, Mickey playing soccer. I do love candy. I think I like these. I, I want the flip-flops. How much do they cost? Only one arm and one leg. They fit perfect! And after the Disney store, we went on an Animal Kingdom Jungle Cruise. Man, yeah, I love the Jungle Cruise. What do you see out your side? Whoa! <gasps> Toilet paper! That is so rare. <laughs> Can you believe that? Oh my goodness. It's over there. 
Hmm. <gasps> Hand sanitizer! Holy cow! That's incredible. This was a great choice. Rare animals. And we did all the best rides too. Look, look, look. It's a small world. Oh, yeah! Classic. Avatar? Whee! Whoa! Oh. Ah. Oh. Splash Mountain! Oh boy, Splash Mountain! And of course, everyone's favorite, the Tower of Terror. Tower of Terror is my favorite ride. Oh, the animatronics are really lifelike. We had so much fun at Disney Home. Wow, thanks Disney for another unforgettable experience. Good afternoon, evening, morning, whenever you're watching, good day. Thanks for joining us again for another episode of Virtual Youth Group. We're thankful that you tuned in again this week, and we're grateful that you keep watching and uh, that you're looking for some hope in this time of uh, uncertainty and craziness and change, and uh, we're just hoping that you continue to find good news here on the Illuminate YouTube channel. Even when we go to dumb places like Disney Home and uh, when we give you silly workout tips, we're glad you keep tuning into this part of it too, which is where we really want you to be. Uh, it's, you know, the gospel truth, the message of hope. We just want you to come here and find hope, find laughter, find extra, um, lightheartedness during this time. So thanks again for being here with us. We are grateful again that you have tuned in. So tonight I want to start out by talking about Facebook a little bit. Just a real little bit. Um, so I don't know how many of you students like 6th through 12th grade kids are on Facebook. Um, I know that's turned into something that's mostly for us older people. You're missing out. Believe me. So for those of you who aren't aware, Facebook has this section called Memories. And if you look in that section, you're able to see things that were posted on previous years on the same date. So for the last few weeks, I've been seeing a lot of Easter posts um, and a lot of old Easter pictures in my memories on Facebook. So here's one. I'll show it to you now. Here's one from 11 years ago on April 13th. These are my best friends from my church at home in the year 2009. We are adorable. So while we're on the section of old gems of pictures, uh, just the other day was National Siblings Day. So I was able to find some old pictures of me and my brothers, uh, one from about 25 years ago and one from about five years ago at my wedding. Look how much we have grown. So cute. So it's crazy how much people change over the years and not just in a physical way or in physical appearance, but they change due to life experiences. Uh, they change due to their joys and tragedies that they experience. Uh, their jobs and their school and their friends change them. And so many other things change people very quickly over the years. So as much as people are creatures of habit, there's something about them that always changes without fail. In fact, change is a life thing, really. And what I mean by that is that simply most things in life change pretty frequently. <laughs> so look how many variations of Coca-Cola there are, right? Or think about how quickly a sports team can change from year to year. Fashion styles change so quickly that you might as well just find what works for you and stick with it because it's gonna change tomorrow. That's why I always wear cat shirts. They never go out of style. 
Have you ever read the terms and conditions on a product or a phone app or something like that? Unless you're a lawyer, probably have not. Who has time to read through thousands of words when you can just scroll down and click agree, am I right? So terms and conditions are these large sets of rules that you have to agree to abide by before you use something. But here's the crazy part about terms and conditions. Almost all of them state that the terms and conditions are subject to change. In other words, companies can basically say, here's how you should do things, but if at any point we don't like the way things are done, we can change that. They make their own rules, but they also make it so they're able to break their own rules if they want to, or if it's convenient for them. That's not cool. So it kind of seems like that's how life works sometimes too. There are terms and conditions that apply to the way we do things, but life doesn't always follow those rules if it doesn't want to. Things just kind of happen that make our circumstances less than ideal. So for example, can you think way back to the beginning of your school year? <laughs> All the way back to August 2019, it seems like forever ago. Would any of you have guessed that in seven short months, everyone would be finishing school at home, that the world would essentially be shut down to fight against a global pandemic. Could you have ever guessed that? What about back to Christmas? I mean, who would have guessed that as you spent your Christmas with gathering with family around the dinner table, that in four short months, you wouldn't be able to gather again for Easter to celebrate? Or if you regularly attend our youth group, Think about way back to February, the end of February at our high school retreat as we spent a ton of our day outside on Saturday playing football and we spent time finding God in nature. Now could you have guessed that in less than one month from that day we'd all be stuck inside for the foreseeable future? Change can happen in an instant and it has the potential to completely turn our lives upside down in good and bad ways. And who can know what the future holds? We have no idea how long this might last, but we can expect more changes along the way. So change is scary. And a lot of people strongly dislike it for several different reasons. Reason number one, it forces us into the unknown. And when we're working in areas we don't have figured out yet, we get stressed out. Reason number two, since change can be emotional, it often causes us to lose perspective on things. An emotional change can cause us to feel like the sky is falling, or the world is ending, or some other drastic and dramatic event. Number three, change causes us to realize that we are not in control. This is a biggie. We spend a lot of time and energy in life trying to control our own outcomes and figure out how things are going to piece together so nicely for us even if we don't necessarily realize we're doing it, uh, we do it. <laughs> so guess what, friends? Change happens. It is a part of life. We have all experienced it greatly, especially over the last few weeks. And it's going to keep happening, whether we like it or not. So instead of asking ourselves, how do we avoid change? We should probably ask ourselves this question instead. How can we better respond to change? How can our attitudes be different when change comes our way? So this past week, we just celebrated Easter, right? And if you were with us last week online, you'll know that we celebrate Easter every single day. We have that ability and we are Easter people so that so we can celebrate Easter day in and day out. So Easter was this glorious event that changed everything for God's people. But there were some pieces about this change that was a bit scary for the Jewish Jesus followers. Their way of life that had been accepted and practiced for centuries upon centuries was suddenly changing drastically. Their whole life revolved around being obedient to hundreds and hundreds of laws and rules that God had laid out for their ancestors. And now Jesus was saying, listen, what's most important for you now is the one relationship that you have with me. So Jesus wasn't changing those laws, or he wasn't even saying that they weren't important anymore. But he presented a different way of following them that focused instead on loving God and loving other people. So the writer of the book of Hebrews knew that these changes for the Jewish Jesus followers were indeed stressful. So he wrote some encouragements to them. In Hebrews chapter 13, we find several of those encouragements. 
in Hebrews 13 verse 5, the writer says, Don't love money, be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. So the writer of Hebrews here is basically saying to Jewish Jesus followers, I get that a lot is changing right now. And a lot is going to continue to change too, probably. But know that God's character has not changed at all and will not change throughout all these other changes. So later on in Hebrews chapter 13, the author writes something that is always an encouragement for us today. In Hebrews 13 verse 8, we read, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So even though Jesus changed the way life was to be lived, Jesus himself had not changed. He was the same God that they had been following since they first encountered him, generations and generations ago. The writer of Hebrews wanted to remind the Jewish believers that Jesus wasn't just some random guy who came to break their system. He was the same God who was present with them when the system was created. So though the way they worshipped and interacted with God may have changed, the God that they worshipped did not change, and he will never change. We can hear their story now and know that our circumstances also will change, but the character of God will never. When life change causes us to feel out of control, we remember that we follow the one who actually is in control. God was good in the beginning, and he is still good today, and he will be good tomorrow too. So here's an illustration that I was told that was very helpful for me in processing all this change and uncertainty. Have you guys ever watched figure skating during the Olympics or some other point in your lives? It is crazy how much they will spin around and around and around on the ice and not get dizzy or lose their balance and fall over. The key to their stabilization is that they keep their eyes on a single unmoving spot. So even though it looks like they're out of control, they remain stable because they fix their eyes on something that does not change or move. Life moves fast and things can change in a single instant. If you didn't believe that before, this last month certainly has proved otherwise. It is incredibly easy for us to feel out of control right now. Life causes us to spin around and get dizzy and feel sick and lose our balance. And we tend to forget how God has shown up in our past when this happens. And we think of the worst possible outcomes as we look in a bunch of different directions and don't focus on one single thing. So during these moments, it is important to remember to fix our eyes on the one that does not move and does not change. If we are able to look at God through the spins and the twists and the incredibly unstable moments of our lives, we will remain stabilized and balanced. So I want to close with just a few short thoughts. Change is going to happen. Change has happened in a big way. But we serve a God who does not change, who will never change, and who always acts in love. He is in control. Believe me. Believe him. He is a firm foundation that cannot and will not be moved. Will you pray with me? Father God, we are grateful that you are a God who does not change. Your character is good. Your character is love. And you pour that love out on us every single day throughout history. You have always done that and you will always continue to do that. So allow us to believe that and allow us to have confidence in the fact that you do not change and you will not change. And you have not changed even in the last several months when life has changed so drastically. We ask that you would give us the courage, the wisdom, and the strength to fix our eyes upon you when everything else around us is spinning so fast. And we just ask that you be with us throughout the remainder of this uncertainty and beyond that. You would just be with us forever and we would always look to you um, as the stabilizing, firm foundation that you are. So God, we thank you for all that you've done for us and for all that you will continue to do for us out of that love that you have for all of us. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen. So thanks again for joining us this week. Um, every week I just like to tell you a little bit about who we are, just in case this is your first time joining us. If it is your first time joining us, welcome and thank you very much for tuning in. My name is Colin Moyer. I am the youth minister at First United Methodist Church in Chambersburg, PA. This YouTube channel is Illuminate Youth Ministries YouTube channel, which is our student 6th through 12th grade ministry at the church. And again, we're grateful that you have joined us for this online video message. When we're not in quarantine, we usually meet a couple times per week and we hang out for a bunch of other events and silly stuff and really meaningful things as well. So if you're in PA and you're a student 6th through 12th grade, I hope you will join us at First United Methodist Church once this all has passed. And what, as long as we are social distancing, we are going to continue to be online. We'll post this video, uh, online youth group, every Wednesday. And we meet together on Facebook Live at 7 and Instagram Live at 6.30 on Wednesdays. So feel free to join us on one of those platforms. For those of you who do know who I am, hello again. Thanks for being here. We continue to experience change every single day with our scheduled events and our programs and what was supposed to be on our you know, spring and summer schedules. Things change and they'll continue to change for the next couple months, but I hope you know that I am always here for you and I hope you know that you can always come to me, reach out to me, contact me with any questions or if you just want to talk, uh, you know where to find me. Um, but in case you don't know where to find me, Here's our website, and you can find contact information on our website. But we will continue to meet every Wednesday night on Facebook and Instagram Live, and we'll have Zoom small group gatherings. And on Friday nights, we'll have our Zoom gatherings from 7 to 9. Uh, this week, we'll be meeting for prayer and hang out and catch up and just to chat and have fun together and probably do some funny things you know you never know you never know i guess yeah so again love you guys thank you so much for tuning in can't wait to see you here again next week as long as we're in social distancing quarantine isolation stuff you can expect that we will not change and we will be here every wednesday until this passes so thanks again miss you Love you. I hope to see you very soon. But until then, know that we serve a God who does not change and who will never change and who is always the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Bye.